Good morning, everyone. My name is Yu Zhang, and today I'm going to talk about our project Starbucks, which aims to improve reliability and consistency in cloud-based file synchronizing services, such as Dropbox. And this work is done in conjunction with Chris Jagger and our advisors, Andrea and Ramsey Pajdusu. So everyone, everyone knows these cloud-based file synchronizing services, such as a Dropbox, Google Drive, SkyDrive. We'll use them. So these tools are incredibly useful because not only they back up your data automatically to the cloud server, they also synchronize those files to your, all, all your other devices. So it gives a sense that mm, you may have like four or five copies of the data everywhere. And even Dropbox says that your stuff is safe and will never be lost. But is that true? So you thought the data is safe, but here are two problems. So why is data corruption? So let's say you have uh, a photo on your local machine, but unfortunately it's corrupted. So the synchronization client mm, could propagate that corrupted file to its server and then synchronize them to all the other devices. So now all the copies are bad. The second problem is crash consistency. So mm, if the local file system or the client is not able to um, recover from a crash correctly, the client is it, um, might upload the inconsistent data to the cloud. And there is another problem, we call it out of sync synchronization. As you can see in the figure, originally we have all the files in version one everywhere. But when you're, up, uh, you're updating your local copy to version two, somehow the machine crashes. And after reboot, in some cases, the local machine would still have version two here. But the synchronizing client fails to synchronize this new version to a cloud and to other devices. So in the end, different devices will see different versions of this file. So we think that the cloud-based file synchronized service actually gives you a false sense of security. And in fact, the many copies do not always make your data safe. The underlying is the loose coupling between the local file system and the cloud storage. Because these two systems are designed separately, but now they're linked together to protect your data. And there are some cases which are not handled correctly. So what can, do, can we do about it? And we propose this project Starbucks, in which we're trying to close the gap between a local file system and cloud storage. And we're trying to provide some desired properties without too much changes. So this star can represent many properties, such as reliable, fast, or private. Private. But here in this talk, I will mainly focus on the two most important properties, reliability and consistency. So here's the outline of this talk. And I will spend most of the time explaining these two problems. And before I conclude, I will talk a little bit about our solutions and the current status of the project. And we all know that the data corruption is not uncommon. And in the old world, without synchronization, all the corruption remains local. But if you have a synchronization service, the corruption can become a pollution to all the copies out there. So we think the file synchronization service is a double-edged sword. If you want to like, synchronize your data quickly, you'd better make sure that the data is good before you actually upload them. So before we, before we talk about these problems in detail, let me first use Dropbox as an example to show you how the cloud-based file synchronization service work. And because Dropbox is not open source, so what we have here is all based on our observations. So as you can see in the graph, let's say we have a file named foo on disk with this inode pointing to a bunch of four kilobyte data blocks. And on cloud, on the Dropbox server, the same file exists, but it's divided into four megabyte chunks. Let's say we boot up our machine, we start the Dropbox client. So the Dropbox client will do an initial scan of all the files in this folder to see if there's any offline changes. So Dropbox client keeps a local database which records for each file the path name and like file sizes and motivation times, all those attributes. And when Dropbox client does a scan, it will kind of compare the attributes in the inode with attributes stored in the database. So if the database is good and if these two matches, 
it means that there is no offline changes. So what if an application, um, say, overrides the second block, D2, with D2 prime? So the file system will update its states. And in this case, for online changes, Dropbox client relies on some file system level and, and monitoring services, such as iNotify and Linux, to detect such online changes. So after write is done, the iNotify will send a notification to the client. So the client knows that, OK, this file foo was just, being, was, was just modified, modified. So the client would start to update the database. And then a Jobs client will start to read the file foo chunk by chunk. So for the first chunk, um, both D1 and D2 prime and many other blocks belong to this chunk. Once Dropbox client gets the chunk, let's say it's a chunk C1 prime, it will first check with the server to see if it's a duplicate. If it's in this case, it's not. So it go on to use the rsync algorithm to figure out what exactly is changed in this chunk. So in this case, it's D2 prime. So only D2 prime is shipped to the server. And the server will probably construct the new chunk based on D2 prime. So know that because what the client knows is that this file foo was changed, but it doesn't know like what part of the file changed. So it has to read all the file to memory and check every chunk. So in this case, if you see chunk two is a duplicate and chunk three is also a duplicate. So no new data is up uploaded. And in the end, the server would increase the version number. So notice that um, we, we have seen that the um, local database in maintained by Java's client is actually um, modified multiple times during the whole process. But um, we don't know what exactly is going on there. OK, so let's start to do some experiment. So we, we inject force, say, to block D1 outside the file system. So it looks like uh, this corruption. And then we will start client. We will change some other blocks, or we will modify the metadata of the file, and let's see what's going to happen. So let's first start the client. In this case, the metadata is not corrupted. So the client sees that, OK, these two matches, there is no offline changes. Well, which is good in this case, because the corrupted block D1 is not propagated. However, once you start to modify the file, say we all write D2 with D2 prime, as we've mentioned, the Jobs client will get a notification, and it will start to read the whole file. In this case, because the chunk one includes D1 and D2 prime, so the corrupted block D1 is read into memory, and they form this corrupted chunk, chunk one prime. So by using the async algorithm, it finds that both D2, both D2 prime and D1 are changes. So these two blocks are shipped to the server. Then the server make include those corruptions in this new chunk. And what if we only modify the metadata? In this case, say, we just do a simple touch to this file. So only a modification time of the inode is updated. In this case, the client will also get a notification saying, hey, this file's metadata was changed. And the client will still go to check this file to see what is exactly is going on there. So similarly, it will read the whole file, which will result in the corrupted block showing up in the server. So we have performed this kind of experiment across all these sources on both Linux and the Mac OS. And the results are showing in this table. L means that the local corruption still exists. And G means that the corruption is propagated to the server and to all your other devices. So as you can see, whenever there is a change to the file, as long as the, the new write does not overwrite the corrupted block, the corruption will be unpropagated. And then in some cases, even if there is no data change, it will still cause the client to upload the corrupted block. So, so, so far, we have shown that the bad bits can be easily um, <coughs> uploaded to the server, and thus polluting all the copies out there. And the 
the cloud must have used some like checksum to protect the data, the copies on cloud, which means the bad bits are promoted to resilient bad bits because it's now protected by a checksum, which is bad. So we think this is, this is not some implementation bug. This is a fundamental problem because the synchronized client could not tell from, could not tell legitimate changes from actual data corruption. And by the way, because we have all the copies in cloud and in other devices, mm, the local file system actually, mm, it's, it, it does not fully utilize the redundant copies on cloud. Because if the corruption, if the local corruption can be detected, local file system or the synchronous client can actually recover from local corruption by fetching your correct copy from the cloud. And then let's talk about the crash consistency problem. And, and we all know that all different kinds of file systems use different technologies to um, properly uh, recover from crash. So some modern file systems like ZFS, ButterFS, ButterFS they, they are implemented using copy and write techniques. So it means that after crash, you can always roll back to a consistent disk image. But most uh, traditional file systems like E3, E84, they rely on journaling. And we all know that data journaling is great it can give you data consistency. But doing that, uh, it requires all the data blocks to be written twice. One, one time to the mm, journal, and the other time to its home location. So it's more common to use a weaker mode called order journaling mode. But the order journaling mode, it only logs um, mad data in a log. And it, it also requires that data blocks are written before mad data is logged. But this kind of behavior can cause problem. So here's how the order mode works. Let's see, we have log on disk, and we overwrite this file, the two, first two blocks of the file with D1 prime and D2 prime. So the first step is to flush all the dirty blocks to disk. And then the system logs the inode block in the journal. And finally, a commit block is written to the journal to indicate that, OK, this transaction is done. And finally, the system will checkpoint the, mm, the journal the inode block to its final location on disk. And because data blocks are written before inode block is logged, there could be some interesting cases when a crash occurs during the first step. Let's say if a crash occurs after first broadcast disk, but not the second one, which means you will have actually inconsistent data on your disk because it has D1 prime, but not D2 prime. However, if the crash occurs after both of the updates across disk, well, you can see the MAD data is not updated, but the data on disk are actually consistent. So basically, Based on this observation, we can have like two cases if we run Jawbox on top of ex 4 order mode. In the first case, the inconsistent data content can be propagated. And in the second case, the consistent data is actually not synchronized. So uh, in the first case, let's, say, let's, we, let, let's use the same example. And suppose the crash occurs after D1 prime gets to the disk. So the, the database is changed once, and now you have inconsistent data on disk. So note that because Dropbox updates database um, several times during the whole process, so it's not in a very good state. It's not fully updated. And after you reboot the machine, you start a Dropbox client, it will see that the, the database is not in a good state. So Mm, so, and you, you will have inconsistent data on disk. It will upload this file to the server. So you end up with the inconsistent data, D1 prime and D2 on the cloud. And in the second case, if we open a file with, say, OSync, so all the, file, all the writes will be synchronized. And then, after both of the dirty blocks gets to disk, the machine crashes. It crashes before the system has a chance to send out a notification. So the local data database meaning by the client is untouched. 
And then after reboot, mm, you have consistent on disk, consistent data on disk. But when a Dropbox client does the initial scan, it sees that, OK, the database seems good, and the attributes on your local disk matches the record in the database. It means there is no offering changes, so there is no sync. Then in the end, your machine will have version 1, but on the server, on the cloud, and on your all other devices, you will have version 0. So, so now you might be wondering that why can't we just use the data on the cloud to perform this kind of crash recovery? But the answer is no, because we have observed that the Dropbox uploads data asynchronously in the background. And not only it reorders file uploading by file sizes, it also like delays some um, file uploading if the, those files are being actively modified. So whenever there is a crash occur, it's possible that the files on the server does, um, do not match a consistent and persistent state on disk. So we don't think it's OK to just simply use data on the server to, pro to do crash recovery. So in, su in summary, and we've shown that the inconsistent data can be easily get um, uploaded to the server. And we have also seen cases where different clients and different devices see different versions of the file, which is also not good. So we think the, um, the reason is that the cloud and the synchronizing client has a very weak sense of what exactly is going on in your local file system. So we feel that we need some kind of in-depth communication between local file system and the cloud so that they can handle all of these cases nicely. So now uh, I will talk about um, a little bit about the pos uh, possible solutions and the current status. So for the corruption problem, we, we've added like data checksum into ext4 so that it can detect all the disk corruption. And once the corruption is detected, uh, the, job, the ext4 will contact a user level demo, which will in turn fetch the good copy from a job box server and use that to fix your local corruption. And we also added uh, a ranged file update notification to the current an iNotify mechanism. So that whenever a, a file is updated, it tells the application that, OK, say from range 2 to range 100 bytes, they are actually changed. And because we cannot modify a um, job box, so we adapt this new iNotify mechanism. And we use that with the own cloud. It's an open source uh, synchronous service. <coughs> And currently, um, we are working on, um, we are trying to use some kind of in-memory snapshot to capture the state of the file system on disk. And we ask Dropbox to only synchronize files based on that state so that we can make sure the state, the the state of the files on the cloud will always match the state of the disk. And then we can use this to facilitate crash recovery in ext4 in order mode. And so to, to conclude, we've shown that mm, with a, a cloud-based file synchronous service and your local file system, if they are not um, connected in a very tight way, it means that the many copies will not always give you data safety because of the propagation problem and because there are some cases the files are just out of sync. So we propose this Starbucks project in which we're trying to solve the problem by reducing a gap between the existing file system and the cloud storage. But we think that mm, ultimately we might need like a combined design of the file system and the cloud so that they can provide much better capabilities which is not possible with the two, files, with the two systems in isolation. And, and thank you. Uh, I will now take questions. Hi, uh, nice talk. Nitin Agarwal from NEC Labs. So I was uh, kind of confused on the motivation here. So on the one hand, we have a local file system and a separate sync service, right? So you could do, use Dropbox or 
mm-hmm. own cloud or whatever and on, on the other hand what i think you are trying to do is trying to kind of blur the gap between the local file system and the sync service trying to make one aware of the other so conceptually for example why should the sync service care if i am dumping corrupted data because the local file system might have done something to prevent that or if not then it's not really the job of the sync service so um do, do you see a tension here or can you comment on well, what so would happen if you kind of integrate the two because let's say the local system is doing some kind of fancy check summing to prevent that mm-hmm. then the sync service has to do absolutely nothing yes you're right so th- that's a good point so if the local file system can do everything it's great say if you just use zfs <coughs> it can detect the, like this corruption so with that in, ma- in mind um but what what it cannot do is to recover local fra- corruption by using the actual copies on the cloud. Mm-hmm. We can still add that function entity to the ZFS. And mm, the other thing is, even with ZFS, if mm, the crash occurs, the file system will be in a consistent state. But it's possible that um, like after crash, but before you perform recovery, the data on the cloud would be in an inconsistent state. Because what Dropbox uploads is actually an in-memory state of the files. So we still need some kind of mechanism to synch- actually synchronize the state of files on the cloud and the state of files on disk so that we can do better recovery by using the data on the cloud. So one quick, uh, one quick follow-up. Um, will the local system thus modify it if it is used without a sync service, would it behave any differently? That should be, I guess, the assertion here. Yes, if there is no synchronous service, then every bad thing remains local. So there is no problem. Thank you. Uh, Great work, Alison Bessani, University of Lisbon. Um, If I correctly understood, what you are trying to do now, since you found the problem, is modifying the file system to make it uh, deal in a better way with this this problem, right? Yes. Uh, don't you think that uh, maybe a, a better solution would be for these cloud file, cloud uh, systems clients mm-hmm. to be implemented as I don't know user level user space file system or something like this? They should be like fi- small file system that we use for for integrating the local storage with the what we have uh, in the cloud. Mm-hmm. So, okay, uh, let uh, me... Ju- ju- mm-hmm. so just to, 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 to conclude this, my point is instead of having to modify all the file systems that people use on several systems, maybe what, what would be a better solution is for this Dropbox, uh, SkyDrive or whatever, they b- mm-hmm. brought us uh, some kind of small file system that we can mount and use it. Yeah, I, th- I think that th- that's a good point. So, um, but the thing is if, um, if you ac- actually change the kind, to make the use like its own file system. I think it, uh, it might, um, first of all, if the file system is like a use level specified system, yeah. it will definitely affect the performance. Of course, of course. Yes. And secondly, mm, it kind of requires that like every different devices has to like, like mount a kernel module for the file system if you decide to use a kernel level system. Yeah which I don't think many users will likely to do that. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because currently, Dropbox is just a user-level daemon. Everyone likes it, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, just one question. Um, essentially, what uh, you're proposing is uh, we'll have uh, some checksum as well that's missing from ext3 file mm-hmm. system, right? So the question there is, uh, there'll be an overhead for that, uh, yes. doing that. How does that compare to do a pure, totally journaled uh, ext3, ext4 solution? So uh, your suggestion is like using data journaling? Yeah, data journaling. And how does that compare? And it seems that, yeah, the checksum should be better, but uh, do you plan to do that comparison? Uh, I think so. So f- to answer your question, so if you only have like, say, data journaling, but if you don't have the checksum, you could still like upload your local corruption to the server because okay. you still the data journaling does not gives you a way to detect corruption. 
So you still need some kind of checksum to prevent bad data from being <laughs> uploaded. And you also plan to look at DTEN diff, uh, the standard for data integrity uh, field on the hard disk, like some hard disks support 520 byte sectors and yes, mm -hmm. and you can uh, put your you know checksum and some application data there to get that from the hard disk itself rather than having to do it on the user space or kernel. Yeah, that's actually a good point. But because like Dropbox is more like a personalized storage, so I think most users will just have like use normal disks. Okay. So we want to make sure everyone can enjoy benefit of the checksum. Cool. So we decided to have a checksum in file system. Great. So we have time for one last question. Uh, Vassil Teras of Stony Brook University. So uh, you actually need to separate, you know, uh, legitimate writes from non-legitimate updates to the data, right? So we're thinking if these services can use some kind of uh, logging incorporated in the kernel to look all of the writes coming through the file system and computing the checksum at that point and storing it in the database. Yeah, I think that's, um, yeah, I think that's also a good solution to this. But still, as, as I said, it requires the client to have some kind of mm, very module in the kernel. Well, which, you're already mm -hmm. using iNotify at, the, at this point, right, mm -hmm. which is already in the kernel, so mm -hmm. you, you don't need an extra, an extra module. So maybe they're mm -hmm. already logging subsystems in the kernel, existing one, that mm -hmm. allow you to do that. I don't know that. Oh, um, so, okay, so basically you're suggesting it's, it's similar to like we, we can in enhance the iNotify mechanism to have yeah, more it's like similar interfaces. to your proposal of ranged updates yes y yes i yeah i generally agree with you i think it's a good idea okay thank you very much yeah.